What foundation are you using to build your life? The Bible talks about the solid ground, the bedrock, and then there is the sandy ground. I'm going to read this um, words verbatim because the word of God has a capacity to cleanse the bride. So this might be your cleansing right now. Praise God. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, 27 says this. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains come in, torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the flood waters and the torrents come in and the wind blows, that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Now, I'm reading this in the book of New Living Translation. The translation is New Living Translation. But I usually prefer reading this one in the New King James Version or the King James Version. And it basically says, when the rains come, when the storms come, when the flood waters rise, that house that is built on solid rock will stand. It will withstand the flood waters. It will withstand the wind. It will withstand the torrents. But the house that is built on the sand, the rain came, the winds blew, and the torrents rose, and it collapsed, and great was its fall. Now, this parable is a really good one to have it's a really good one to like meditate upon and think about because jesus is very clear he's saying like if you hear my teachings if you see my word and you do my word it goes back to the book of james the book of james talks about be a doer of the word not a listener only so in this particular parable let's look at it this way there are two categories right you have the people who hear the word of god and they put it to practice they actually implement what they hear right implementation is what increases your wisdom right you have the you get the knowledge of god you understand that knowledge and then you implement it and because you're implementing it in your day-to-day -day practices you are increasing in wisdom not the wisdom that is intellectual. I'm not saying that's wrong. You need intellectual wisdom, right? But the wisdom of the kingdom of God, right? You hear the word of God, you understand that word, and you implement it. You put it to practice, and you are likened to a wise man. Why? Because that implementation increases your wisdom in the kingdom of God. Now, there's another category of people. They hear the word of God, and they store it. They just store it. They're like, oh, that was great. That was so nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love that teaching. I love that sermon. I loved that snippet. I meditate upon this word. It was so great. But they don't put it to practice. They don't put it to practice. And they are likened to a man who built their house on the sand. The rains came. The storms came. The floodwaters rose. The wind blew. And that particular house collapsed. And the collapse was it just a small minor collapse great was its fall now it's important to understand that both categories of people are going to go through hardships they're going to have experiences right so both the wise and the foolish are going to have experiences but the difference is what one implemented when they heard both are experiencing flood waters torrents the wind the storm but one category heard the word and put it to practice so they were able to withstand the storm they were able to withstand the flood waters and the wind that came beating upon their house day after day after day now the other category heard the word they're going through experiences through storms through issues experiences that are not pleasant but they don't have a found, they don't have a sound foundation. They don't have a, a bed rock for foundation. Why? They did not put the word of God into practice at all. But I want to show you something because you might ask right now, Primrose, what is the practical way of doing this? And I love putting the word of God into practice, making it practical for day-to-day -day use, right? Because the Bible is very clear. Christ is telling us, you need to put into practice okay put it into practice now the book of james chapter 1 verse 27 talks about a 
what God deems as religion. Now you know and I know that God requires relationship with us. He does not want religious rituals. He wants relationship. He wants you to spend time in his presence. Be quiet, be silent, worship him, extol him. Come into his presence to just exist within him. Not ex not I come to God when I have an emergency. I come to God when I'm hungry, when I'm thirsty. No, come to God just to spend time with your Heavenly Father without expectation. That is a relationship. You go to spend time with people without expecting things from them because you purely love them and you care for them. All right? So God is saying in James 1.27, I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation, pure and genuine religion, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for the orphans the widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you the world is on a mission the world blinded by the god of this world second corinthians 4 4 is blinded they are corrupted they want to corrupt you now james is telling us listen the pure and genuine religion where you like I want to know what to do practically to be in the sight of God to be a good son of God right sonship to enter sonship to be pure and genuine is this that you do not become blemished and spotted corrupted by the world around you that you refuse to compromise but the other part is this that you care for the orphans and the widows and the fatherless who are in distress who need your assistance people who are in need need you be the hands and feet of jesus so again primrose how can i be practical with my pursuit of god pursuit of jesus how can i be practical how do i practically implement gaining wisdom I've heard the word, I want to practically use it. James 127 is just two keys, just two, just two keys. Do not get blemished, do not be spotted, do not be corrupted by the world. Keep the truth of God within you and speak the truth when it is absolutely necessary. Second, care for those in distress, the needy, the poor, the orphans, the fatherless. Throughout the Bible, it shows us God has a special place in his heart for the orphans, for the widows, for the fatherless, for those in need. And he reiterates in the Old Testament, in the life of Jesus, in the life of apostles, it is this, a common thread of caring for the needy, of caring the poor. The point where it says in the book of Psalms, he sits, he stands at the right side of the poor. He stands at the right side of the poor. So when you're giving a person who's in need, just imagine God standing at the right side of that person. When you see who is going to listen to the cries of distress, the cries of, I need help. Please assist me. I need food. Please help me. So care for the needy, the poor, the orphans, and those in distress. The other part of this is what? Do not become corrupted. 